Okay, so. So, welcome back. So, we are going our first quest. Now, movement spacebar to jump. W A W A S N D to move. Or the recommended way of moving hold down both mouse buttons at the same time and just point your mouse at where you want to go. So, right click to select our first quest. Every quest will give you some text about what they want you to do, your objective, and your rewards. Here we'll be getting some copper, some experience, and a belt. And to do that, we'll have to sit, kill six black rock wargs. Press accept. We open the map, and that tells us that this blue here is the, uh, the blue the area in which we'll be able to find our objective. One here just tells you which quest it is. So, because of that, and if you look also here on our mini map, so we'll move over to here. I'm going to leave the tutorial running. Obviously, I know how to play, but they'll be on the screen to help remind you of things. And also so that I can show you the proper experience. So, here's a black rock walk. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to press 1 to attack with our spell. This is going to be a frostbolt. There we go. So we've killed the warg, we've gained 100 experience, and we took a little bit of damage. Right click on it, dilute it. Most creatures will drop an item, they'll sparkle if they do. Just right click it, and then click to loot your item. That will now appear in bag slots. Should you choose to, you can go into your game menu, which remember is this one in the bottom left hand right hand corner you can press interface and auto loot or change any of the top any of the, of your options in here now what i would recommend going into interface into display changing your status text here both then clicking okay and what will that do that will make sure your experience will show up at the bottom here as well as a percentage and number for your health that way you'll be able to easier see how much health you have left so let's finish completing our first quest i'm going to fast forward through this for you but you enjoy getting to grips with your character getting wargs and using your abilities And there we go, look at that. So because we have this 100% experience boost, we were getting quite a lot of experience for killing the orgs. And after five kills, we've gained a level. You'll notice this number now says level two. We've gained about 20 experience points. And our bar at the bottom here is reset. So we'll just kill one more warg and then we'll be ready to hand in our quest. So we are, quest complete. So if we press M, quest has now turned into a question mark. You will have noticed that when we accepted the quest, it was an exclamation mark. Exclamation mark is always an available quest, and a question mark is always a quest available to be turned in. So we'll click complete quest, or that, We've gained 680 experience, 35 silk copper, and a belt. 
while we're here, we'll accept our next quest. Then we'll right click and equip it. Oh, you'll notice it's now just appeared on our character. And if you press C, go to our character screen, the item we equipped. Items have varying degrees of quality from gray, the basically trash vendor items, white, which are common items, green, which are uncommon, blue, that are rare, purple, that are epic, and orange slash yellow, that's a legendary. Experience those for a little while. So now we have to kill eight Blackrock spies. Now, did you see that? Level three killed that character before we had a chance to do so. And that's fine. That is something that you're going to encounter on more populated servers, especially at lower le levels, due to the number of players that are playing. But I promise you. It will pass, and it is better than having a server where there are many people playing. Don't worry though. Monsters are shareable players. So if you see someone attacking them, a, a monster, and it's a monster you need, don't hesitate to jump in and give them a hand. You will get credit for your quest, and you will get loot. So now, we hit level 3 there. And we've gained a new spell. That is Fire Blast, which is an instant cast spell. Whack our target with a great ball of fire. So, we can combo these abilities now. Press 2 for the instant cast. And then we can carry on with our normal frost bolts. Notice that these Black Rock Spies are now dropping coins for us. Most humanoids will drop coins in one way or another. And that is going to be a very good way of you earning money in the early stage of the game, well as by its following quests. So again, I'm just going to skip ahead for the rest of these quests, for the rest of these creatures, and we'll skip ahead to where we're handing in the quest. Look at that guys, we got our first little green item, which is some Malachite. Malachite is a gem that is used for crafting, that can be sold on the auction house, or used by a jewel crafter to make some jewels. Hold on to that in your inventory for now if you do get one, as it will be worth all later on. And there we go, we've got another drop. This white time it's a white common item and it's tough jerky. Tough jerky is food. If you right click on that while it's in your bag, you'll eat and restore health. You'll sit down, there'll be a nice little eating animation, and your health will be restored. Okay, so we've completed, we've killed enough of the spies to complete the quest. And now, we're going to run back and in the quest. This time we're going to get a robe and a lot more experience. So expect to level again. Careful. So we'll open our bags and we'll right click and equip that robe. Now the quest we've just been given is to go around the back of the abbey and speak to this gentleman over here. This gentleman is going to request that we kill eight goblins. We've got another quest here, and we can pick up more than one quest at a time. If you want to level efficiently, then the recommendation is to pick up as many quests as you can in an area, complete them all, then hand them in at the same time. So that's what we're going to do here.
So, as well as this quest, kill the goblins, we've also been tasked with healing some Northshire soldiers. Now, I'm a mage. I don't have any access to healing abilities. That's okay, because the quest has given us means to heal someone. With just the right click, cast a special little spell, and that soldier is healed. However, if you were to play as a healing character, such as a priest, you would be able, you would currently have on your bars an attack ability and a healing ability. And you would be able to use that healing ability to heal these soldiers without having to use the healing ability given to you by the quest. In order to do that, all you got to do, click on a soldier with the left mouth button and not the right. You'll see they're at half health. All you need to do is cast that ability by either pressing it on the action bar or by pressing its associated number. So I'm just going to once again, skip ahead on killing these monsters and I'll join you again on the hand in. Look at that, we've not only looted more Malachite, we've also looted a tailoring recipe. When you get to choosing your professions, you will be able to loot various recipes from around the world. These will give you access to items that you can create that you won't necessarily be able to create from a, a trainer who will train you in that profession. Here we've learned the red linen robe. If you choose tailoring, then when you hit skill level 40 in tailoring, you will be able to create this robe. However, if you aren't picking tailoring, you will have the option of either selling it on the auction house, which you won't be able to do, I'm afraid, on a starter account, or selling it to a vendor. If you feel like you might want to continue playing the game past the starter edition, hold on to things like that in your bank, and we'll show you that later when we get to Stormwind. Okay, so let's hand in both these quests. We've gotten some boots from Brother Paxton. And from Sergeant Wilhelm, we get some gloves. We equip both the gloves and the boots. And we accept our new quest. We also hit level 5, which means we've gained access to a new ability. This ability is Frost Nova. Frost Nova is a little different from the other abilities you've got. So let me demonstrate that for you now. Your other abilities have been direct attack abilities. However, you might not always get attack abilities. An ability like Frost Nova does do damage, but it is not an ability to attack with. It has a cooldown of 30 seconds, means you can only use it every 30 seconds. And this is what it does. You see that? These creatures are attacking me now, but they're also frozen in place. One of the advantage of abilities like that, and a class like a mage, is that you have options like that which will freeze characters in place, thus giving you the option to escape if you need to, or reposition yourself away from damage. As a mage, you will get used you're freezing your enemies in place and then teleporting away out of damage out of damage range to hit them with your abilities from afar. Most classes will have some kind of ability like that, whether it's done or a route such as Frost Nova we just used. Okay, so we hand those in, we've got more quests. Take both of these quests. This quest has given us an item which you'll see on our back. It's a fire extinguisher. 
going to go extinguish some fires. Okay, so we'll jump over into the vineyard. And, oh, hang on a second. These creatures have red names. Did you notice in the other areas that all the creatures we fought either had no name above them at all or had a yellow slash orange outline? Now, there are two... There are three types of creatures in Warcraft, and they're color-coded. Red, yellow, and green. Red creatures will have a name bar above the head, and are what we call aggressive creatures. These are creatures where, if you get too close, they'll attack you without provocation. Yellow creatures will wait for you to attack first. Green creatures are friendly. Here we have a quest item. These are items that we'll need to collect in order to complete the quest. You may notice that didn't go into the backpack. That's fine. These items used to go into the backpack, but a quality of life change over the 15 years of World of Warcraft has changed it so that these items no longer take up bag space. Here we have some water. Now that water is really similar to the food we had earlier, except this will increase your blue bar, which is your mana. Basically, mana is what you spend in order to cast, to cast spells. Most of the time, you're probably not going to notice much of a drain on your mana from your basic attacks. However, some special attacks might drain your mana quite significantly. Did we see what I did there? By clicking on the little icon next to the quest, or right clicking on the item in your bag, you are using the fire extinguisher on these flames to extinguish them. And that will give you credit for the quest. Now, I have a few more fires to put out and a few more orcs to kill. So, what I'm going to do is once again fast forward through and we'll see you when we go to hand in. Hey guys, I want to see if you notice something. When I've been attacking creatures with my frostbolt, have you noticed they've changed to a slight blue colour and slowed down? Well, that is because Frostbolt counts as a, an ability known as a slow. What does that do? Well, if you hover your mouse over a Frostbolt, you'll see that not only does it launch a bolt of frost damage at the enemy and cause 12 damage per attack, it also slows their movement speed by 50%. If you combine that with a mage's ability, to cast Frost Nova and freeze people in place, you can see why it can be very easy for mages to attack targets, freeze them in place, and run away before a creature can get to you. Okay, so we're getting back to North Shore Valley now. We're at the Abbey, we're going to hand in. Here you'll notice we've got two items for completing this quest, and one of them is a bag. We'll accept the quest, and your bag hasn't gone into your bags. It's actually in the bag slots here, it's automatically been equipped. We now have four more slots where we can store items. Then we ex got enough experience to hit level 6. And one final quest. End the invasion by killing Kurtok the Slayer. So we'll run over there. How do I know where I've been going? Well... Keep an eye out for the arrows 
on the minimap as well as checking your map regularly. When you get used to questing in World of Warcraft, you'll learn to keep your, the minimap in your peripheral vision. For long, you'll never have trouble finding another quest. So here's Kurtot the Slayer. You'll notice on his enemy portrait, he has a little exclamation point icon. That means that he is a target of a quest. So let's attack him. You'll notice he's taking a lot more attacks to kill than other characters have. A lot of the time, named creatures that are the targets of quests can be considered little mini-bosses, and sometimes you might even face actual bosses to fight. So, we're going to follow the recommendation of the tutorial here. Previously, you've been running back to Northshire Abbey. Now, if you right-click your hearthstone, you'll automatically be teleported back there. There we are. Welcome back. So, I'm back to North Shore Abbey. Now, I have a choice. You get to pick which item you would like. You have the choice of a dagger or a staff. Hovering over one or the other, show you what the new item is, what type of weapon it is, damage it does, how often it attacks, its speed, its damage per second, its sell price. Next to that, it will show you what you currently have equipped, so you can compare the two items. Also tell you what changes will occur should you equip it. You'll notice that the staff gives us 0.4 damage per second, as opposed to an increase of 0.1 of the dagger. So let's click on the staff to select it, complete quest. We'll accept our next quest, which you might notice a little bit further away. So equip your staff. Let's look at the map. Our quest isn't in here anymore. If you right click on the map. Oh, we did it a few couple too many times there. Let's go back onto the map. We'll right click to zoom out. Now, we were in Northshire here. Our new quest is all the way down here in Goldshire. Okay. Let's start heading out over there. When traveling between areas in World of Warcraft as a new player, stick to the path. On your on the path, you will be safe, well, relatively safe, from wandering creatures who may inhabit the wilderness. If you choose, you can deviate from the path, but be warned, you might have to fight dangerous foes who may be higher level than you. Along the way, we're going to come across this gentleman. You will find one gentleman like this in any area you travel. He will ask you to speak to the innkeeper at the next location. So we're going to run all the way there. I'm going to fast forward it for me. I'm going to run all the way there, hand in these quests, and that'll be the end for this episode. You may notice you get some frame rate issues just like I have here. Why is that? Well, that's because there's quite a lot of players here. Have you noticed? Having a lot of players in an area will tend to slow the game down a little bit, but don't worry, it's easily dealt with. Now, we can see on the minimap that we have a question mark here, but it's grey. That means that it's inside a building which will be this one to our left. We have two quests. We have a quest to hand in here. And in this one. Which will give us 
braces and a choice between food or water. We can equip those braces and we will follow the tutorial's advice of making this in our home. So right click the innkeeper, select the option of make this in your home and accept. Remember that hearthstone we used to teleport back to Northshire Abbey? Well, now it will teleport us here instead. We'll then hand in the second quest to Marshall Duggan. Get our legs. Which we'll then equip. And that's where we're going to end it. This video. We'll pick up again in the next video. Where we will accept the quest in Goldshire. And we'll take our first trip to Stormwind. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help.